Welcome to the Web Animation Programming Guide. In this first video, we'll briefly take a look at animation technologies, then we'll begin transition programming, because transitions are a great place to ease beginners into the more advanced material that we will cover later. These are all animation technologies that you can apply to your projects without referring or linking to a third-party framework or library. And in essence, these technologies are the backbone and the core of all of the third-party frameworks. So once you get a good grasp of working with these technologies directly without layers upon layers of abstraction, then you really get to see how things work and you start to decrease your need for dependency on third-party tools. And we're going to be exploring transition programming within this first video. So we'll get a quick refresher on the CSS transition properties and how they work and what their values mean. And we'll also explore the JavaScript interfacing for transition programming. Those of you already fluent with CSS transition syntax and all of the fundamental concepts behind it, you guys can skip ahead. But I'm going to have to give a refresher on it just in case any beginners are watching. This is my IDE window and this is my browser that I'm testing in. And I have an example.html file with a style element and then a div element. The div element has an ID of box1 and box1 is given its CSS properties here. And initially its background color is set to orange. And I use the hover and active pseudo selectors here just to show that that's pretty much the extent of user interactive states that can be applied through CSS. So when I hover over it, it turns red. When I hover away, it turns back to orange. So if you're used to working with JavaScript, the hover state kind of simulates the mouse over and mouse out when it comes to CSS changes. Then the active state is when I click down and interact with any of the elements. Now what transitions are is a way to, instead of snapping from orange to red and then red to blue, we can transition between the two different states. Between the changes, we can animate a transition effect. First, I'm going to set the longhand transition properties. Then we'll show you the shorthand approach. So in this case, I want to transition the property of background color. I want the transition duration to be half a second. The transition timing function will be linear. And transition delay will be zero seconds. So let's see what that gives us. So when I hover my mouse, we should see a transition from orange to red instead of a quick snapping from one color to the other. Instead of an abrupt change, we now have a transition effect. When I click down, it transitions to blue, then back. And here are all the CSS properties that can be animated. These are the animatable properties. And I might have left one or two out, but this is the bulk of them. And we were just animating the background color. So a lot more cool things you can do when you experiment with animating all of these properties. And I put a gold star next to the transform property because that property gives you the most creative freedom and gives you the coolest visual effects when you apply animations and transitions to the functions of the transform property. So I won't waste your time by adding simple transition or animations to all of these properties here, but you should take the time on your own to experiment with them. And throughout the rest of the guide, you'll see a lot of these properties being animated in various examples and demonstrations. And whenever you have an element and you want it to have a transition animation effect on more than one property, you can just put, and you happen to be using the longhand properties like I'm using here, you can just put a comma and then the next property that you want to affect, such as width. Then go down to the duration, put a comma in there, then put the duration for that transition. We'll just put one second. You can also use milliseconds. So if you have in your, when you're programming with JavaScript, if you have to use milliseconds, you can put 1000 ms and that equals one second. And let's make that an ease and the delay zero seconds. Now, if I were to make the delay, if I didn't add that second zero seconds after the first one, then both of these properties, background color and width, and even if you had many more, would all have a delay of zero seconds. But I can go ahead and put a delay on that of 0.5 seconds. And also if I was to remove ease here, then both the background color and width would have a linear timing function. 
And I'm going to explain the timing functions in depth in just a moment. Okay, now the width is set up to animate or transition from one state to the next over one second with the ease timing function and a half a second delay. So here in my hover state, I would just put width maybe 300 pixels. And then when the user actually clicks it, we'll make the width 50 pixels. Now let's refresh the browser, hover. You can see there was a slight delay. The color, background color change, transition on that, there was no delay. But there is a delay in the width transition. See? And when I click down, it goes to 50. Now, if you wanted to have many more properties for this box one, uh, to have transition effects when things change, when its properties change, you can just list more here using commas. And then you do the same for duration, timing function, and delay. Okay, now we'll demonstrate how to get the same results, but using the shorthand transition property. So what we'll do is just remove this and remove all of this. So all you do is put a space in between each property for instance you're going to specify the transition property then you put a space and transition duration would be 0 0.5 seconds space transition timing function was linear then space the transition delay was 0 seconds now I could just put a comma here and then width or you can even take that down to the next line you just put a comma here and then you start with your width settings and that one was a duration of one second, so a thousand milliseconds. Or you can just put one second. That had an ease timing function and also a uh, one second delay. Or I think a 0.5 second delay. So now you're doing the same thing. You're animating the background color, giving it specific settings. And you're animating the width and giving it its own specific settings. And I could just add another comma here, go down another line and start with another property and all of the settings I want for that. It's very simple to set up using the shorthand property. It saves a lot of lines of code too. So let's make sure we get the same effects. Mouse over, mouse out, then we click down and everything's working just fine. Now we're going to start programming transitions with JavaScript. So I'm going to remove this active and hover state in CSS. And I'm going to remove the multiple settings and I'm just going to transition the width property. I'm going to put a little control on the screen or in the code and then I'm going to refresh and then I'm going to change the width using this control. You see there that's something you could never ever do with CSS alone because it's interactive now the animation. That means the user is manipulating what happens in the animation because the user is dictating the change of the box width. And that's using the on change or change event, which is something that you cannot access in CSS. That's why we turn to JavaScript. And here's the little bit of JavaScript code that I'm running inside of that on change event. Box one dot style dot width is equal to this dot value plus pixels. So we're just accessing the value of this input type number. So the setting is made up in the CSS. And then anytime the width is changed using some kind of control or any time in the flow of your JavaScript that you want, you can change the width and it will have an animated transition effect because it's set up here in the CSS. Now let's remove it out of the CSS. Let's just take these settings here, control X and get rid of the transition property altogether, refresh. And then once we change the width, it's just going to abruptly change to the new width because we removed the transition property. But what if we go down here and we put in a script element and we start defining these transition properties through JavaScript, which will allow us to make everything dynamic and interactive. The user or your program can even dictate which properties have transitions applied in a dynamic sense. So let's define a longhand properties and I'll show you that first. Say box one dot style dot transition property is equal to width and remember these are the longhand properties you can also use the shorthand property in JavaScript so this next one is going to be the duration and that was I think one second 
And the next one was timing function. And that was linear. Oh no, we had ease for that. Which I think by default the timing function is ease. So if you leave out the timing function setting, it's going to ease by default. And the same with the transition delay. If you leave it out, it'll default to zero seconds. Now you can see we're camel casing when we're defining these properties in JavaScript. Remember in CSS they had hyphen between them and there was no capitals. But in JavaScript you'll get a syntax error if you have a hyphen there. So that's why they're camel cased in JavaScript. Now even though the transition is not set in the CSS, we should still get a transition effect because we have defined those transition effects in our JavaScript code now. So let's refresh and see if we have transition. We sure do. Everything works the same. But now we're defining things in our JavaScript code which allows us to make all of these values dynamic and interactive which is something you can't do with CSS. And if I wanted to do another property like opacity I would just put the comma. Same, same way we had the syntax in CSS is how you would apply it to the values in your JavaScript. Now to do that with the shorthand approach you would just remove all of that. You can remove all of this and then you set your properties here. Remember those are space separated when we're using the shorthand property. So we put width and space. The transition duration was one second. The transition timing function was ease. And the transition delay was zero seconds. Make sure our application still works the same. Sure does. Now all of the transition properties are very easy to understand except the timing function. That's the only thing that's slightly complex. The delay is just the amount of seconds or milliseconds that you want to put there. The duration is the same thing, the amount of seconds or milliseconds. And the transition property is simple to understand. You just put the property that you want to have the transition effect on there. And the timing function is the only thing that might give people some confusion. So we're going to go over that real quick. The values that you can provide for your transition timing functions are made up of keywords and functions. And what the keywords do is they're equivalent to these two functions, the steps function and cubic bezier. And if you're from France or another European country, you might pronounce that as cubic bezier. Now when you use the ease, linear, ease in, ease out, ease in, out keywords, you're basically calling the cubic bezier function with these specific values. And when you use step start, step end, you're calling the steps function and providing it these specific parameters. And I'm going to demonstrate the steps function to you in the code in just a moment. Now, in order to better understand cubic Bezier, I'm going to take you to Wikipedia. I'm going to type in Bezier curve, then click that result. And then once we get to the Bezier curve information, we're going to scroll down to cubic Bezier curves and click that. And that will snap us to that part of the page that discusses cubic Bezier curves. And that'll give you a breakdown of what all of the four parameters or points that you can specify within that function. Now, when we put the steps function into place, what's going to happen is it's going to stagger the transition to make abrupt steps within the transition effect. So if I put four steps here and then I refresh, when I change this to a higher width, you see it takes four steps to reach that new width and then if I change it back to a lower width it takes four steps. Do you see how that works? This has to be a positive number. It takes four steps in the animation. If I change that to 10 you'll see that it takes 10 steps. If I put that in a very high number like 100 it will result in like a smooth transition. So that's how the steps function works. So you can specify two parameters in the steps function. Second parameter is either start or end depending on where you want the step to occur at the beginning or end. So that gives you a little bit more of an explanation about 
what all of these timing functions mean, the ease in, out, linear, etc. And when you're programming transitions, you can tap into the JavaScript transition events. The only one that's universally supported in all browsers at the moment, I think, is transition end. Transition run, start, and cancel don't have very good support in all the browsers yet. But transition end seems to work in all of them, or most of them. And these are the attributes, the data that we can access when those events fire. So let's go back into our code. Here in the script portion, we'll type in box one dot add event listener. The type will be transition end. And then we'll write a function here to handle it. Then we'll close off the add event listener and bring this down a couple of lines. And then we can just put any code that we want upon transition end. And just for a quick little demo, I'll make an alert pop up and just type in transition ended. Then refresh the application and let's go ahead and make a change. And then a pop up, an alert pops up and says transition ended when the transition ends. And you can do anything you want here. For instance, you can say window dot location is equal to any URL that you want. Let's see if it can go to another page. So basically, I'm telling the script or the program to navigate to adamcorey.com when that transition ends. So let's see if that works. And there it went. So you see, you can do anything you want upon transition end within your program. And it depends on how good you are with JavaScript or how good you are with JavaScript will determine your creativity and what you can do when transitions end. We could even take box one and let's just take this code right here, pop it in right there and bring it back to its original 100 pixels. Actually, I can just put that in the string there and remove the plus sign and the number. So when the transition ends, the box will go back to its original width. See? Boring, boring. Boring, boring. So just keep in mind that you can do anything you want there. And we can also access all of the properties of the event. So we can type in event in between the parentheses for the function. And then we have access to the event properties. For instance, we can get the event dot property name. And when the transition ends, see it says width. That gives us the property name. Let me put that back on one second. Event dot elapsed time. It gives us the amount of time that the transition took. And you can also target the element. So you can put target. And then once you have the element object reference there, you can target its attributes, such as ID. So the element was box one. We can get its ID value. Box one. So within the event, we can know which element is actually ending one of its transitions because you might add this event listener to a whole group of elements and here are those attributes the data that you can access within the events bubbles cancelable elapsed time property name pseudo element target and type okay that takes care of all of the syntax fundamentals about working with transitions in CSS and JavaScript. And I'd recommend that you experiment with animating all of the animatable properties in CSS. That way you can see what kind of effects that those things will give you. In video number two, we're going to step into keyframe animation programming. And things will get more and more advanced as we move along.